ships. Right. Yeah, they've actually disabled some of our missile installations, and it was done as a show more than anything. Yes. I think it certainly indicated that they disapproved of them. Uh, and in fact, I've, I'm sure some many years ago, I, I read a message from ETs saying that our problem was that we didn't understand that the effects of it went out into space and it affected other life forms outside of our own planet. Yes, we, we, we have no idea what we're doing. I remember reading that the scientists at the time of the Manhattan Project, quite a few of the scientists weren't even positive that if they blew off an atomic bomb, that that wouldn't just keep on blowing and destroy the planet. You know, yes. we, we do some very, very crazy, reckless things, and I think we're still doing it. Absolutely, yes. Now, it's an interesting fact uh, for everyone, and you mention it in your book, because again, it's something that's come, come up uh, very recently, is that the Vatican now acknowledge the existence of ETs. Yes, this came about with the uh, meeting of Monsignor Corrado Balducci, and you have to remember, this is not just uh, some priest. He was a Roman Catholic theologian of the Vatican Curia. He was an exorcist for the Archdiocese of Rome. And I think more important than anything, he was a Vatican insider and close, close friends to the last pope. And when he got together with Zachariah Sitchin, they, they had quite a few meetings, but on their last meeting, they agreed to three different things. Extraterrestrials can and do exist on other planets. They could very well be more advanced than us. And here's the most important one, and, and you have to remember, this is coming from a person in the inside of the Vatican. And the most important of all, man could be fashioned from pre-existing sentient beings that evolved naturally. Now what this dates back to is the early Sumerian tablets where they're talking about the sons of gods coming here and uh, using the people that were here, which at that time was the Homo, safe, Homo erectus, and shortly after and suddenly in the archaeological record, we turn into Homo sapiens. And we never have been able to explain that missing link, but when you really look at the records, there is a lot of evidence for this happening. And the Sumerian tablets gets very specific, even with drawings of test tubes, even with drawings and um, detailed explanations on how they did this. Yes, so indeed it is correct to say that ETs exist and they are our brothers. Yes, and if we know this, we know the Vatican knows this. They have 50 or 52 miles of libraries. And I think the, the organized structures that's been organized and manifested out of our past, they're starting to collapse. I mean, I think we can all agree to that. Something's not quite right. Nations, religions, they're starting to show signs of collapse. And I think the Vatican knows that their days are coming, and I think they're trying to position themselves, even by um, building observatories, they're trying to position themselves for when that day comes, that they can transition into a new leadership role when the extraterrestrials do show up. So how do you think the presence of ETs or proof of ETs should affect our beliefs? Well, I think it's going to completely change everything. Um, I, everything. It, it's going to collapse a lot of uh, what's left that doesn't collapse over the next few years because things are collapsing. We're in the, the midst of a complete reconstruction. But I think if ET shows up, it's going to cause fear in the hearts of diehard believers. As a matter of fact, we have a, a channel here in the United States, uh, and sometimes I, I'm, I get embarrassed to even bring this up, being an American, but we, we need to. We have a channel here in the United States called the 700 Club, and Pat Robertson was talking about how we should treat extraterrestrials if they do show up. He says they don't exist, but if they do show up, we should make every effort possible to kill each and every one of them because they are from the devil. And it's this type of thinking that we need to get past. And I mean, we need to get past it quick. Yes. Uh, on a similar vein, I read quite recently 
that an evangelist also said that anyone speaking about aliens should be stoned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I, it is. It is I, sad, isn't it, that people yeah. uh, don't really investigate the circumstances correctly because you have to think that they would realise that these are peaceful, friendly ETs. I know there are other types as well, but the ones that are mainly visiting us are really our friends. Right, and, and I think that they have learned what we have learned from intervening into an evolutionary society prematurely. Like we've intervened into a lot of the the indigenous people that lives in Africa and in Australia. And by doing this and sending in our missionaries, it's completely backfired. They live in brothels, they're drug addicted, you know, and now it's it's a complete mess. And we interfered with a whole society that had lived in the jungles for centuries, if not millennia. So I think they know the same thing about us. We need to make certain decisions and come to a certain level of involvement before they can really overtly intervene into our evolutionary pattern. Mm. Yes, indeed. Now, you clearly feel that the power of thought is a lot more powerful than we believe because you, you have mentioned that it affects our DNA and in consequence uh, it controls our health and presumably what you're saying is if our thoughts are powerful enough we can also heal illnesses so what are your thoughts about that area? Well again I I think just take into consideration what we were originally talking about about humanity coming together I think as individuals the power that we have over matter is uh, imperceptible but something that has come up from much much research even David Bohm he did a lot of he was a quantum physicist around earth, early 1900s he recognized something even on an atomic level if you compress atoms together to the point of density that we call plasma they stop acting as individuals and whatever you do to one atom all atoms equally react And I think when we get to that point of concentration with people that are waking up to what we're talking about right now, we're going to ignite into another level of consciousness. And at that point, we're going to come up with remedies for a lot of these problems, which are nothing more than our feelings of alienation and us versus them. You know, this me, you idea that we have will change from the inside out. Yes, I, I, I certainly believe you're correct there. So, do you think that as people come to realize that they have this innate power, that if they have a strong belief in it, they could actually start healing themselves even now? Yes, I, I think if we're going to have a belief, this this is a good belief to have because it's actually backed up from some of the science and research of the day. But the first thing we need to realize is, more like Fred Allen Wolf, he, he wrote a book called Taking the Quantum Leap. He's a quantum physicist. He said the first thing we need to do is realize that some of our old beliefs are dysfunctional and no longer work, and they need to be dismantled. And we can only do that with just keep on hitting it with rationality and logic, because uh, these beliefs run deep. Yes, indeed. Now, the, the power of thought, I think, is something that comes in Dr. Masaru Emoto's works. Uh, I've read some of his articles about the consciousness of water. Uh, he also talks of consciousness expanding into other dimensions. What do you know about that? Well, I think we're feeling the effects of that ourselves. I think other conscious beings, other conscious patterns and levels are emanating into our lower dimensions as we speak. I think this is a lot of when somebody gets an idea or some kind of epiphany or a transformation that they can't quite explain.